how to choose a solar panel in Australia in 2022. So you're thinking of buying solar for your home. There's probably hundreds of brands of solar panels to choose from. You're not a solar panel expert. How should you know what brands are good and what brands are lemons? That's where I come in. I'm Finn Peacock, a chartered electrical engineer and the founder of solarquotes.com.au. With my 13 years of experience in the solar industry, I've put together this chart. It shows all the brands of solar panels that I'd be happy to have on my roof, sorted from budget end to premium end. I'll say that again, I would be happy to have any of these brands on my own roof. The ones on the left are for the more budget conscious buyer. The ones on the right, for people that don't mind spending extra to get higher performance and longer product warranties. The most up-to-date version of this chart can always be found in my Solar 101 guide, which I've linked to in the description. Now, let's look at the four most important factors in choosing a solar panel. The warranty, the technology, the efficiency, and the temperature coefficient. When you're looking at solar panels, the warranty is really important, but what you might not know is that solar panels come with two sets of warranties. There's the performance warranty, which is always at least 25 years and is more or less worthless. <laughs> and the product warranty, now that's the real warranty. Performance warranties are simply guarantees that your solar panel performance will not degrade more than a certain amount per year. All solar panels degrade in performance over time. About half a percent per year for budget brands, maybe 0.3% per year for the higher end brands. I call performance warranties worthless because it's really easy for manufacturers to try and wriggle out of them and claim any issues with your panels fall under the usually shorter product warranty. And even if you can prove that it's a performance warranty claim, the compensation you're entitled to is usually peanuts. That's why you should be looking at what product warranty is offered with a solar panel, as it's the one you will rely on if things go pear-shaped. Once upon a time, most panels only came with a 10-year warranty, with only a handful of super high-end brands offering the 25-year product warranty. Nowadays, the product warranties offered by budget-end panel brands have been creeping up, with some budget brands even offering 25-year product warranties. As high-end brands carry a premium price point over budget brands, it's really up to you and your situation to decide if it's worth paying extra for a premium product with a longer product warranty, especially since budget brand product warranties are closing the gap with those high-end brands. Think about whether the home you're putting solar on is your forever home, or something that you're more likely to move out in 10 years or so. Now, when it comes to comparing solar panel specs, a solar panel will have dozens of specifications on its data sheet, and people can really get their knickers in a twist comparing them. I'm here to say you don't really need to worry about any of them. Just pick a brand from the chart I showed earlier and you'll be good to go. But if I had to choose three specifications to focus on, they'd be the panel type, the panel efficiency, and the temperature coefficient of the panel. Solar panels can use different cell types and cell arrangements, such as monocrystalline, polycrystalline, half cut, and shingled. I'm here to tell you that any difference in performance between any given panel technology is totally marginal. So don't listen to the salesman eagerly telling you how much better his panel's technology is than someone else's. The second specification to look at is efficiency. Now this is an interesting one because intuitively you'd think a more efficient panel would give you more energy, but that's not the case. For example, a 370 watt low efficiency panel will produce the same amount of energy as a 370 watt high efficiency panel. The difference is the high efficiency panel is slightly smaller, so you can fit more of them on your roof. If you've got a big enough roof, lower efficiency solar panels are fine and will save you a good chunk of change. But if your roof space is limited and you need to squeeze as much power as you can out of it, then you may find the extra cost of top tier high efficiency panels worthwhile. Though, like with panel product warranties, recent advances in solar panel tech mean that even budget solar brands can offer high wattage panels, once again, closing the gap with the high-end brands. The third and final specification to look at is what's known as the temperature coefficients, or Pmax. I got up onto the roof on a bloody hot 40 degree summer's day to demonstrate what this is. Did you know solar panels love light, but they hate heat? The hotter it gets, the worse your solar panels will perform. A solar panel is sized in watts based on the perfect solar panel temperature of 25 degrees but the solar panel will almost always be hotter than the air temperature. So it's a uh, 37 degree day at 9 a.m. in Adelaide. We're having a bit of a heat wave. Let's see how hot these solar panels are 
after they've been baking in the sun for half the morning. So the solar panels are sitting at just over 51 degrees. That's 26 degrees more than their perfect temperature of 25. As a really rough rule of thumb, a solar panel will lose about half a percent of efficiency for every degree the panel is over 25. So these panels here are operating at 26 divided by two, 13% less efficiency than ideal. But don't worry, a typical six kilowatt system on your roof will still easily power your home's air conditioner even through a heat wave. I'll finish by addressing something you might have heard of, tier one solar panels. Tier one is an industry ranking scheme which banks use to decide if they trust a brand enough to finance multi-million dollar solar farms which use those panels. Tier one status is based on the financial stability of a solar company and can be thought of as a proxy for quality. At the end of the day, if a bank is going to lend millions, tens of millions or hundreds of millions on one brand of solar panel for a solar farm, you can be fairly confident that they're going to go with a reasonable quality brand. Now, tier one does not automatically mean that a panel is good quality. There are a number of tier one brands that I personally would not buy for my own home. And to make things even more complicated, there are some great brands out there that are not tier one. So at the end of the day, don't worry too much about getting the perfect solar panel. Think about whether you want a budget system or a top end system, and then use the charts I showed earlier to choose a brand from the relevant side. If you're considering solar and don't know who to trust, my website, solarquotes.com.au, makes it really easy to get up to three free quotes from installers that I have personally vetted and trust. Just visit solarquotes.com.au, pop your postcode into the top right box, fill in the form, and I'll take it from there. Thanks for watching.